the first method of reliability is wall falling, and there's four walls surrounding the mat. The north, the east, the south, and the west walls. And the good part about the walls is you can follow them, because they're straight. If your robot's going forward, it's not necessarily going straight. So it's really good to use these walls and follow them. So here's a model of a section of the robot where you would follow the wall with. So there's three wheels here. There's the leading wheel, which is this yellow wheel here. This is the following wheel, which is the gray one. And there's obviously the driving wheel, which is the one with the tire. So the leading wheel is a wheel that you're going to be pushing against the wall. So this wheel will allow your robot to follow the wall and go with and push against the wall. The following wheel is only used when you're exiting the wall, such as when you're turning out. That's when you're applying pressure to it and it's spinning. And obviously the driving wheel is part of your main robot and it's going to be giving power to this. So the programming for this is you're going to run a curve turn so that the robot is slightly curving in toward the wall while still going forward. So basically all you need to do is you have the outside wheel, outside driving wheel to have more power than the inside driving wheel so that the robot goes kind of a curve. So the, the leading wheel is going to push against the wall and the robot will be able to go straight along with the wall. To get out of the wall, you can't just do a right turn because the robot will hit the wall if you do that. What you need is you need a curve turn out. So again, in this, this time, this inside driving wheel will give more power than the outside one. So what would happen is the following wheel would push against it and your robot can get out of the wall. So here's an example of a robot with light wall following wheels on it. So here's the driving wheel and this is the leading wheel and this is the following wheel. So when the robot's pushing or doing a curve turn against the wall, you want it to be a slight curve turn so that it's pushing into the wall and when you want to exit, that's where the following wheel comes in place and the robot will just curve turn out. Now we're talking about the placement of the three wheels. So again, the leading wheel is the only wheel that's coming into contact with the wall when you're following it. Whereas the following wheel is only coming into contact with the wall when you're exiting it. So now if you want to find a good balance and the power ratio, you have to test around a bit. If you put your driving wheel too close to the leading wheel, what would happen is if you tried to follow the wall or do a curve turn, the robot would swerve in and crash into the wall. So you have to make sure that you have a good balance between the driving wheel and the leading wheel because those two, the, ratio, the distance between them determines how well you're going to follow the wall. And keeping in mind is if you adjust this distance, you have to adjust the ratio of power between this driving wheel and the outside driving wheel. That's all for the video. Thanks for watching.